And there we were, no plans were made, no lists ticked off, no dreams were chased. No one's got places to go, people to meet, or things to do. The silence hurts your ears in this hopeless situation. You're feeling blue, just waiting, waiting, waiting. Tick, tick, tock, dust the clock, round and round we go. Today is like tomorrow, and like the day before. We're stuck in Groundhog Day, but this is no movie, it's reality on display. Our lives once characterized by a realm of possibilities now live between walls, screens, and one and a half meters, with the spider faces being behind masks, so we're not our capabilities. And so although the world's on lockdown, we mustn't lock our minds with it. Don't drown in nostalgia, but try to adapt, change, make the most of it. We always want what we can't have, the grass is always greener, no? But let me tell you, before you know it, we're looking at a new tomorrow. outside of the window and <laughs> they're all monkeys jumping so I just grabbed my uh, my camera and I actually got some good shots of them it's so cute it was like this little oh some toothpaste still um it was like this this monkey family and one had a baby one on its back it was so awesome and it's just literally out of our bathroom window right in the garden <laughs> how awesome is this place we're planting trees today I believe I'm gonna plant some plantain so yeah, it's exciting. Never planted a tree in my life, so Ooh, let's see how that how that goes. How's it going? <laughs> wow, you look like a real farmer with that hat. <laughs> Okay, so tell me, how does one plan a new plantain plant? Uh, well, you gotta take one that's sort of juicy looking. Uh -huh. Not the biggest one in the group. And then put them in a nice fresh hole. Nice fresh and hole. Put some more dirt around it. And there Seal you go. <laughs> That's the technique. Hmm. Alright. Oh, it's ready for its hole. I think it actually might fit already. Let's see. Oh, it's heavy. Yeah, if you put it in the lengthways. There we go. Woo! Like Another one down. Fresh. Startle it. We'll roll back up. Middle. Aww. Bully. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Look at how cute all the tiny ones are. So those are all the, the mama ones, and then these are all the baby ones. We just plant it. Just a couple of rows. Yeah. Hello from under the mango tree. <laughs> um, this over here is our phone chair. Apparently the reception here is the best. Uh, so whenever you need to make a phone call or need good Wi-Fi, this is where you should be. <laughs> so I'm sitting here because I was about to uh, call my embassy. It has been 
almost six weeks now that we've been here and I have been in contact with Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands to see if there's a way for me to get out because, well, my financial funds are not until the end of days, so I kind of do need to get home and I'm beginning to worry as we're seeing uh, governments now extend the quarantine period by weeks and sometimes even months on end. At some point you begin to wonder how long will I actually be stuck here for? Because I think in the beginning we're all like, oh, it's such a great place, so much room for activities and awesome. But I just think in the beginning all of us didn't really realize how long this might actually take and how long the quarantine period would be, how difficult it would be for us to to get out if we wanted to. I mean, when we came here, uh, the quarantine wasn't like installed yet. There wasn't, there weren't that many rules. And Costa Rica actually said like, hey, we're not gonna, you know, shut our borders. We're not gonna be like all the other countries. It's gonna be okay. And then when we were here, day by day, rules kept changing. And all of a sudden Costa Rica was on full lockdown. Dus er is niks wat u kunt doen. Maar ik spreek niet met de ambassade, toch? De ambassade is dicht. Is er een andere manier waarop ik contact met u kan doen? Ja. Ja, werkt ze in ieder geval. Ik, ik ga ze nog even proberen te mailen en dan hopelijk... Ja, precies. <laughs> Oké, okay. fijne dag. I... I can't believe this. I'm just like, who can help me out with this? Apparently no one, because the embassy is closed. Foreign Affairs just tells me that they can't land a plane and I need to contact the embassy, which is closed. And then I don't even know who I, who I just spoke with, who, who that emergency number is that I got transferred to, but he can't do anything also either. I don't I didn't even know who can help me anymore at this point, it's just like, you suck, deal with it. And for God knows how long. I'm just trying to be brave. And is somebody over this place us right down the middle? So when we are constantly going, 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 you know, like why are people so overworked? Why are people so, you know, forced to have this non-stop, you know, mm -hmm. wavelength is non-stop. And then whenever you do finally get a break, you just crash. It just becomes this perpetuating cycle and nature is screaming back at us going, when are you going to slow down? Mm -hmm. When are you going to take a break? And this virus is literally giving every single person in the world a break right now. It like gives everyone a time to like really have not shit to do. <laughs> and like everyone's like, I'm always busy, but now no one can make that as an excuse. And now we're able to do the things that we dream to do and the things that we always put off and postpone. When are we ever really appreciative or happy or proud of something that we already did in the past, well, almost never, because we're always chasing the next best thing. This really gives us the time to just reevaluate our lives, I guess. Now we, we have the time to actually see what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and thinking about whether we want to make changes or um, are we happy with what we're doing right now. to nature, it gave me a lot of time to focus on what I felt and thought of things without the constant voices and opinions of the outside world. I experienced this kind of stillness for the first time in a while. Like I reconnected with myself and as well with Mother Nature. I hope that after we've all had this time of stillness and reflection, we see the world with new eyes. 
we have been mistreating Mother Nature and it's time for us to really appreciate all the beauty that's around us. Because honestly, to pause and connect back to the present and listen to your heart is truly the best thing you can do. Guys, we finally seen the bigger yeah! So just coming back from a jungle hike and apparently the taker is close yeah. by. Oh my gosh. Wow. Hey. Hey cutie. <sighs> and as if the tape here was the bearer of good news, that afternoon I got a message about a possible way to get me home. Well, this is it. Bye, room. Here we go. All packed up. <laughs> so weird, leaving this room for the last time. Like this was my home. Last six weeks. So almost every day. I had a pancake for breakfast and I also just got me my last one. One more ain't gonna kill you. Oh my god, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's my boat out. Only one way in. One way out. <laughs> so, we got to stop by the police. <laughs> it was quite a journey, so to say. Every uh, car on the way got stopped at some point and they were asking where we were going and uh, why. Because apparently you can only drive your car out of the area where you live if it's really like an emergency. Especially San Jose is like danger zone because it is it's basically the epicenter of the, uh, of, the, of the virus right now. So if you have nowhere to necessarily be like in a you know, uh, an appointment or the, the hospital or a flight out, then there's literally no reason for you to go to freaking San Jose in their eyes. Um, and yeah, because I, I didn't have my flight book yet, they almost wouldn't let us through. I, I get why they want to prevent people from like traveling too easily, but I need to go to San Jose to be able to book my flight. There was one very uh, Ruth, police officer though, she kept getting me away from the rest and asking me these questions like, like my flight and why I was here and how long I've been in Costa Rica and how much I paid the driver and just almost it felt like an interrogation. They also searched my bags and they got like, they just searched the whole car for no reason. At some point we were out of the car for like I think half an hour and then they took the license plates of the taxi. Um, <laughs> And I, I guess he had to pay a fine now and pick them up this, this evening. Um, it's, I don't know, it's, it's really weird. Alright, first leg, so I'm going to say to Houston. I'm sorry, this looks pretty weird probably, but we all got masks because we, uh, we need to wear them around the airport and in the plane. 
which is a good thing, I guess, but it's, it's just so weird seeing what everyone walking around with the masks and especially because for me, like, I just came from the jungle, quite literally, so I, I have not been like into contact with the reality of like you know everyone walking around with masks and social distancing and all of that i have a flight from san jose to houston houston atlanta tomorrow there's like 17 hours in between so i have to figure out where i'm gonna spend the night because i'm not allowed to go out of the airport and then from atlanta i have a flight to amsterdam so in total it's about like 42 hours of travel let's just hope nothing gets cancelled and it will take me even longer because apparently flights still get cancelled pretty last minute so apparently oh, i hate that thing apparently delta airlines just quit for the day and they will only reopen tomorrow early morning somewhere so I can't check in and if I don't have a boarding pass I cannot leave this area where there's literally just a subway that's about to close and then that's it so <laughs> I'm, I'm probably gonna be stuck here for 17 hours Subway to Terminals and Marriott Hotel. Home sweet home. I was talking to my mom, telling her like, well, I, I landed safely, but now, you know, I can't check in and without a boarding pass, I can't really go anywhere else. I'm gonna have to sleep on the airport floor. She goes, well, isn't there a hotel, uh, somewhere you could stay? And she offered to help me out with my stay here and I'm so grateful like Mwah. thank you mom I love you <laughs> because would you look at this ah! Woo! <laughs> mm, I'm gonna sleep so well tonight <sighs> like Tuesday we're gonna do Houston Atlanta and about nine hours in between <laughs> and then finally on my way to Amsterdam so much need coffee Urban glow of the new world. I see the old earth rise. Well, good thing I got my coffee already. Even Slavics is closed. I think what we can all take away from the COVID 19 pandemic is that you can't really calm the storm. What you can do is calm yourself and try to do the best that you can to pull through, help out when needed, stay informed, and adapt. The storm will pass eventually. What you did with this chunk of time, now that's all on you. One of the things that travelers taught me is that nothing is permanent. And therefore, ever since I've been home, I've tried to see pockets of positivity in all of this. For one, I feel grateful to even have been able to get home, to be safe and healthy, and seeing the corona situation is improving all over the world. One mental souvenir that my time in Costa Rica has gifted me is the concept of Pura Vida, loosely translated as the pure life. But it's not only about living a good life, it's about living with intention, knowing that if tomorrow never came, this very moment would be enough. And so it's important to utilize your time in the best way for you, maybe even more so in this shitty time. I thank you once more for watching this series and please let me know what you think and how you've experienced quarantine. Love, good vibes and hope to see you soon.